But let's now shift our attention to Kenya's banking industry. And that's, of course, before we get into the interview with uh, Joshua Agar, let's take a look at Kenya's uh, top five biggest banks by assets. Uh, that's, of course, at the close of 2014. KCB tops the list at 490 billion shillings. Uh, KCB is closely followed by Equity Bank at 344.5 billion shillings. Third on that list is Cooperative Bank of Kenya at 285 billion shillings and Barclays Bank of Kenya comes forth at 225.8 billion shillings, uh, followed by Standard Chartered Bank at 222.6 billion shillings. Let's now look at the profitability front. Um, and top of that list is Equity Bank, uh, which is uh, currently the most profitable bank at 17 billion shillings. It's uh, followed closely by KCB at 16.8 billion shillings. Now, after KCB, we've got Standard Chartered Bank, which is third at 10.4 billion shillings. And right after that, there's Barclays Bank, which follows at 8.3 billion shillings. And at a close fifth is Cooperative Bank at 8 billion shillings. That's at the close of December 2014. So how is KCB really faring and what should we expect from the country's largest bank by assets going forward? Now, Joshua Oigara is the chief executive officer of KCB and he joins us on Citizen Business Centre tonight. Thank you so much for joining us um, on, on, on the show. Let's uh, first start off with the hottest issue of the day, which is, of course, not within our real discussion. And that's a parliamentary decision to ask the chairman and the vice chairman um, of the Ethics and Anti-Corruption Commission. What's your take on the fight against graft? And are we heading in the right direction, in your opinion? You know, Tariana, I would say that the answer is uh, definitely yes. It's a, you couldn't fight corruption in one step. You're going to make various steps together to achieve the long, it's a long-term cause for our country. Mm -hmm. and, and definitely being able to have a fair process. And, and I will support just from the words of the head of state a while back and also being the support from the parliament. I, I think that I will vote that is the right direction. But one move alone will not be sufficient enough to change the course of destiny for our country, Tarian. It's right. a good direction. Absolutely. Let's switch our attention to a notice of an AGM yes. um, which you posted on the dailies today uh, with a special agenda of, tran of transforming KCB into yes. a holding company. What will the proposed for, uh, change of form mean for KCB, which you know, has for the longest time just been running as a bank, and right. we know what the implications of a holding company could mean now? So, Sir, so I would say, yes, I mean, obviously over time, we want to be able to go into newer markets, deliver much more products to customers and into partnerships. So we have insurance, we have investment banking, we have Islamic banking, we have new regions. And, and what we see is we're actually running the pace to create Nairobi as a, an international financial center in line with Vision 2030. So by having a holding company, it gives shareholders of the bank an opportunity to be able to invest in different kind of sectors without impacting on the banking business. Mm -hmm. It is a very global economy. In fact, you know, I say that we are sitting in East Africa as a real epicenter for financial development, inclusion, and growth. Mm -hmm. And this is just modeling, you know, Dubai, London, New York, and South Africa. It's a fantastic opportunity. And, you know, I love Africa. Africa is home. The other day we saw M-Pesa is home. And our view is that it's time for Africans to get up and start running the race of complete transformation for our continent. Mm -hmm. You've mentioned a couple of things that I'd like us to break down as, as we go along. And I just want to start with the insurance that you mentioned. And this morning, um, KCB announced that it's venturing into the insurance industry. How does this fit into the bank's um, strategy? I know you've given us a global perspective of what's happening in the financial sector. But what proposition are you making on the insurance front? So, so Terry, I would say two main aspects about insurance. Every single Kenyan, I travel across the region. In fact, our journey of change as a business, uh, more and more I'm a strong believer that the role of business today is not just to make profit, but to be able to impact and transform society and change the lives of our millions of people in the continent. Mm -hmm. So insurance is one part of financial services. Investment advisory, investing in capital markets is another part. And I do believe that by providing insurance, health care, you know, something that covers our people lose their property and assets because they just lacked a simple insurance for 100 shillings per day, 10 shillings per day. And so because we have the largest network terrain of agents in Kenya, mm -hmm. we do believe that we will access, increase access, provide affordability for this insurance product and increase savings. So not just asset protection, but also long-term savings terrain for the country. So I'm very excited that this 
can also change the future of our region. Talking about the future, your strategic goal is to grow customer numbers to 10 million shillings from, I mean, 10 million people um, from the current 4 million. And what surprised me about this was you're actually planning to do this in two years. Correct. How do you, how do you intend to do that? So strategically, KCB has a long plan. We, we believe that running a race of transformation can be fought alone. It's not a singular race. And, you know, we like running an independent race. We've selected that to transform, you need inclusivity. And that means partnering with many institutions. And we may have seen last year, Tariana, that we started as long-term strategic partner with one of the most innovative, successful telecommunication businesses in the world today. And we work with Safaricom. And if you look at our partnership with M-Pesa, Tariana, we just launched up a new KCB M-Pesa account just six weeks back. I remember being here with you with Bob Collimo. And so far in six weeks, we have close to 1.3 million customers who just locked in into the new mobile account. Mm -hmm. Now, we already had 4.5 million customers in December, so we are already now closer to 6 million. Mm -hmm. So, I, I, by what you say, I, I seem to understand that mobile banking is probably going to bring in the majority of the 6 million customers that you're looking to target. I would say absolutely yes. And, and, and you know, Kenya sees at the global frontier today on mobile innovation, revolution, mobile payments, and money transfer. I mean, there is no place in the world today to, you can go to find a better experience for inclusion, like mm -hmm. in the Kenyan market. So it's good to use it and exploit that for our customers. It's about dignifying our customers' lives. How I don't have to go far away to ask for credit. So today we set up our product, we say, star 844 hash, you are able to get, already you are pre scored Tarian. you know you don't limit. So if you need some kind of funds today, within an instance, you're able to get your funds, your limit is there, you borrow it, you pay within one month, three months, or six months, mm -hmm. and the interest rates are between 2%, 3%, and 4%. I, I am aware that we have faced some delays for some customers initially, but that now with Safaricom moving also up into their new G2 platform, now that M-Pesa is home, we'll be in a position to run faster on this product. Let's talk a little bit about financial services. And the reason I mention that is that we're seeing a lot of banks also taking advantage of, uh, you know, pr uh, economic growth and the Correct. growth of the Nairobi Securities Exchange. Correct. And Kenyans, uh, you know, getting to understand how the stock market works. Correct. Is KCB interested in getting in that direction? Or are you already in that space? So we, today, yes, if we look at financial inclusion, I do believe that the lines are becoming a little bit more blurred now that customers are looking for one-stop solution. Mm -hmm. yeah, you know, so the, the, the new world is, is dawning on us today. It's very historic, Terian. I call it we are in the dawn of a new history for financial inclusion, for deepening financial markets. We already have a license today as, uh, uh, to act as a stockbroker from the Nairobi Securities Exchange. We got a license last year. We already have an investment bank today. We already are the largest custodian in the market dealing with asset management. Now, that is an area that we're going to be able to catalyze. In the future, what customers need are partners, people that can say, this is a journey, this is your vision, this is your goal, and we can enable you. So in my words, I say our role as a financial institution is to inspire millions of ordinary Kenyans to run an extraordinary race for development for their country. And now there's millions of extraordinary Kenyans are wondering why the loan rates haven't gone as low as the government had proposed when they introduced the Kenya bank, um, you know, the bank's reference rate. And prior to the introduction of, uh, of that rate, banks used to announce their base lending rates. Correct. But you don't do that anymore. What happened? So if I speak a little bit more about the progress in the last two years, and I also sit as the chair of the Kenya Bank Association, so we've seen the rates come down. So we moved into a new reference rate, uh, which was introduced a year ago now. We've also gone into something we call the annual percentage rates, the APR, which gives customers a chance to compare mm -hmm. the prices for each bank. So as the reference rate comes down, so like now it's at 8.54, customers are repriced. So that's why now we are moving away from the base rate into a new benchmark instrument mm -hmm. for transparency. Mm -hmm. But there's one important aspect. You know, we, we do believe, I do believe that the rates are still going to come down. So we come from the high of it. And I'm talking about average rates, Terian. So we were at 18, 19% two years ago. The average lending rates at the end of December, according to the Central Bank, is 13.5%. So if I come to KCB Correct. tomorrow, what interest yes. rate should I expect to get? So now this is a very, very good question, Terian, that you asked me. Because customers, now we are pre-scoring a customer based on their history with the bank. So Terian, if your credit score today is platinum, is an A1, you get the best rate. And we see markets offering as low as 11, 12%. Mm -hmm. If your rate of customers today, your credit score today is, let's say, a single, a single B, 
or a triple C, you find rates as high as 18, 19 percent. My encouragement is that you couldn't put all customers together because of their behavior. How have they manage their finances? What is their credit history? Remember, the banking industry has got non-performing loans of 5.5 percent, which is more than a billion dollars today. I, today you are paying for the price, Terian, because you're a good customer, correct? Not all customers are able to be in the same position. Mm -hmm. So as you improve your score, you improve your own interest rate from the financial institution. All right, let's talk about profitability. Um, KCB's uh, profitability grew by 17% uh, in 2014, as I'd yes. mentioned earlier. Some would say the growth wasn't as impressive as, yes. as some of KCB's peers, yes. given that yes. you're Kenya's largest bank by asset um, base and the second uh, largest lender yes. by market value as well. Yes. What's the bank's performance in 2014 within your expectations? So l let me say, Tiriana, this is a very a good question for me. I mean, profit is a big driver of our performance. But I like to say that having spent many years looking at numbers, I, I think it's about how many people we can bring in within the net of financial service. So KCB makes long-term investments today to improve on our kind of return. So our shareholders look at much more, what is the return on equity for instance? How much money am I making for every shilling? So we invest in long-term projects. So partnership, for instance, on our transport sector, you know, digitizing transport. We did our own card on transport. Mm -hmm. We are doing the transfer fund for the national government under the program called Inua Jami, for instance. We have, what, 250 branches across the region. We are saying as a bank we are prepared to invest funds today for the next 10 years. In the short term, we, we do make, we are okay with our return on equity at 24, 25 percent. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. We do believe that, you know, we're in the race to become, we still remain in the most profitable institution. But I am convinced that the role of business, and this is very important if you check our sustainability report we launched last year, is about impacting lives, transforming society, creating a better epicenter for development in our markets. If markets move, I think we build a bigger pie. It's like the blue ocean, in my view. If you focus on your making how much profit, and I always argue with our shareholders about this. I believe that more and more we're going to fight under the same positioning and we never create real entrepreneurs, the youth, the musicians, the artists, the people that are selling shoes, that are selling hair. Are we enabling them? So if you look at our product, Serian, for, for, for interest rate, which you offered for 9 pesa, we have the lowest interest rates in the market today. Mm -hmm. So I think it's a benchmark that we are also partnering towards national development by being competitive by just not taking advantage of the market. Let's talk about the region. And uh, KCB's regional subsidiaries contributed about 10% uh, in Correct. 2014 to profits. Correct. That's down from 11% Correct. the year before. Correct. And I understand from research that it's largely because of the performance of the South Sudan branch. Correct. How much is the region actually contributing? And has it been what you expected as a bank? So uh, we haven't Terian, had a... It's much lower. We want our international businesses to achieve 15 percent this year in 2015 and 25 percent in the next three years and, and, and but what we see in the last two years with the rebasing of our kenyan economy kcb has continued to increase its size of the market share and kenya is a strong economy remember mm -hmm. yes this is a hundred billion dollar economy we look at it kenya today is over 50 billion if you look at the rebasing and yes south sudan we went in this market one thing i like to leave uh, you know with yourself terian is that KCB is a partner that will stand for you in good times and in difficult times. So in South Sudan, we want to say 10 years from now, it's a younger country. There are less than a million and a half customers. It's a population of 15 million people. How do we drive that change? Um, I'm interested in talking just a little bit more about South Sudan. Correct. How is it, how is it doing? So I just came from South Sudan last week. Uh, I mean, in terms of our business, I would say the, the business is, whole, is resilient. So activity is still ongoing. You can buy your fuel, you can buy your food, you can buy food. You can, you see a lot of development are taking place in terms of infrastructures happening in place. What we don't see is loan growth is not as high. Actually, it's kind of very more rebound today. And the people are expectant of the peace agreement in South Sudan. I, I will engage at national level as a bank in all the initiatives. We engage at IGAD level to see the resolution of the matters. But I believe that this is a temporary setback. But everything is normal in the country. If you visit uh, next, uh, in South Sudan next week, you'll find a lot of activity happening. People are coming back to the market. But what can catalyze the growth today, Terian, mm -hmm. is the peace agreement, which is already under discussion. All right. Um, in situations like what happened in South Sudan, and we yes. saw that in Garissa, I'm interested in knowing um, in places like those where KCB uh, operates in, 
And as a CEO, what, you know, when these risks happen, especially, you know, terrorism, geopolitical challenges, right. how do you take it as a bank and as an, inv as an investor? So, you know, over time, it's an area that really concerns. And we, as, as, as a bank and an institution, as a CEO, we really condole with all the Kenyans that they lost their lives or their friends and families in the Garissa incident. But as a bank, our long-term view is that how do we enable economic activities to transform the lives of the millions of our youth? This is the biggest agenda we can run today in partnership. Mm -hmm. So now look at entrepreneurs that we have, uh, Terian. We're going to provide opportunity. We see youth as a big opportunity. But without jobs, without businesses, without credit, without markets, we are not able to address the real challenges we face in our business. Mm -hmm. And that's why we are very aggressive in our partnership last year with Safaricom. We called it, uh, we are you know, smart. We said, let's get a million entrepreneurs given access to credit. Mm -hmm. If they can hire one extra person in two years, this is two million jobs mm -hmm. in our country. Let's talk about the future of banking. And actually, you know, I saw an interesting article written yes. by um, our friends from Standard Nyabi again, where you're pitching KCB against Equity Bank and yes. they're basically asking who will control the future. Yes. Uh, you know, is it Oigara or is it Mwangi? Because yes. they say whoever does control, yes. uh, you know, whoever takes control will control every facet of our lives. Um, whoever will control the future will control how we'll pay in our matatus, Correct. how we'll buy our food, um, how we buy stuff at the supermarket and I'm just interested in knowing you know your take Correct. on that question who will rule Kenya's financial future you know it's a very good question to to ask me and I although to be honest, I, I see it very different you know the key bottleneck or the key challenge of our analysis today looks at Syrian versus Joshua it's around the tyranny of you versus me for me for 51 years is about beating one organization against the next my own view in this generation is around bringing a new concept about multiplicity of the future. Can the two of us, can one institution and us work together for a better Kenya? Mm -hmm. The race of two institutions who are fighting isn't a race we want to run as case. We want to run a collaborative race. We want to run an inclusive race. So the two of us, in, in the, and uh, of course the industry together, is running using technology, the mobile revolution, digitizing payments, enabling customers access credit, pre-score them, give them financial access using the mobile. I think that's the biggest enabler. So we are completely connected with M-Pesa. And M-Pesa is the most successful mobile money transfer in the world today. Mm -hmm. So we are sitting at the global positioning. It will tell you that we are already connected with the right partner for us to not just make money, but to invest in the future of our customers change their lives in banking, bring in insurance, bring in investment advice, bring in their long-term savings. And if our customer's life gets better, this is how I assess it. If our GDP is expanding at 7% in the next three years, my mama Mboga today in Kericho or Amumias should see a 7% increase in their basket. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. We've, we've had quite a bit about, um, you know, KCB, about your leadership of, of the bank. Um, but I'd like to get to know a little bit about you. Now, a lot of our young viewers would like to know your career path. And I know uh, that you've worked at some of the top firms in this country, Pricewaterhouse, yes. uh, Bidco Oil, Bamburi, and all at senior financial positions. Yes. But what was your first paying job and how was it like? Well, my, best, my first paying job, I, I did work in, I love teaching. So I remember before I went into Price Waterhouse Coopers out of the University of Nairobi, I did some teaching in a, in a high school, uh, you know, helping kids. They weren't really paying. It was much more voluntary. Mm -hmm. I love sharing my own experiences to other young people because they are the future. Our, my belief is about bringing the future today. We keep on promising the youth about the future, which cannot be seen. I, I believe it's time for them to see that future with our investment. So that's where I started. And mm -hmm. then I went into PricewaterhouseCoopers and I moved up. But I'd like to say one thing in terms of your own career. A lot of younger people believe that you're going to be privileged, special, go to a special school, you know, go to an international school to make progress. I totally don't. I've never seen Where that. Where did you go to school? So I, I went to a school that I cannot even remember. <laughs> <laughs> so in, 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 in high school, okay. in primary school. But I, I think that each of us today... It's, it doesn't, like, the schools don't exist anymore? Or it's just nobody would know which schools those exactly. are? Exactly. Okay. But I mean, my view is that if you're able to, Rian, to position yourself and look into your God's driven purpose in life mm -hmm. and you make progress, I think you achieve absolutely outstanding results in your future. So everyone is destined 
for success. What would you? What is one lesson that you 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 say you would be, you were given earlier on in yes. your career yes. that you carry until today? I would say that you know my biggest thing that has been in life is it to aim that forever you want to do is the philosophy about not postponing to do something for today for tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So the ones that make real progress, Terian, change their perspective and invest in time to do it today. It's quite simple. If you learn a daily discipline, you make it a habit and you make a change in the rest of your life. All right. So you got to the helm of KCB at the age of 36. Correct. It's been three years now. How would yes. you describe the first three years? Were you prepared um, you know, for that position? I would say, Terian, yes, that we've been... For a long time, I've always had this vision of becoming a leader at a younger age. Uh, and, 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 and today, I would say, in terms of a younger age, you know, more than 60% of our Kenyans are below the age of, uh, of 30, of 35, actually. So I was prepared in that way. Mm -hmm. And I would say that age shouldn't limit a leader from becoming transformative in the current generation. Mm -hmm. And of course, I, I read somewhere that um, you had always wanted to be a CEO below the age, at least before the age of of 40 so uh, we wish you all the very best thank you so much for thank talking much, to us Sarah. today and um, we've been doing a month-long series thank on you. young CEOs and thank I know you. when I told you that you said I'm not that young thank you at the age much. of 39 thank you, uh, but before you leave we've got uh, you have to pick another envelope thank you thank you one was your lucky number we've got one up to ten I'll pick up one which is number seven now number seven Correct. all right let me quickly go into it Which watch do you wear and why? Well, I, 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 <laughs> Terry and I wear a Mont Blanc watch. Mont Blanc, uh, yeah. okay. A watch, it's a nice watch, it's a nice classic, and I've been wearing it for the last two years. All right. Yes. Thank you so much, you um, much for joining yeah. us on Citizen Business Center tonight. Well, we'll take a short break. We'll be right back with more Don't Go Too Far. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much.